The last preacher problem that we will cover in this film concerns patristics, which is a name for the study of the writings and beliefs of the early church. The writings from the early church fathers date back to the first century, and of course we should never take their writings as proof of one doctrine over another. The Bible is always the ultimate source for our doctrine. But at the same time, most, if not all of the doctrines we hold today, were taught at some point by the early church fathers. At the very least, these writings provide insight into what the earliest Christians believed about certain subjects, whether those beliefs were right or wrong. So the big question is, what did the early church believe about the timing of the rapture? And in one sense, the answer to that question is pretty simple. Every single early church father who taught on the relationship between the church and the Antichrist believed that the church would face the Antichrist before Jesus returns. The belief that Christ was going to return after Antichrist had done damage to the body. That believers had suffered and had been under his uh, rampage and that they would be set free from that by the appearing of Christ in the sky. That is the basic sequence. And you'll see that in the writings of the fathers. You'll see that in, uh, say, the Didache. Uh, as we kind of look at their collected writings, they believed in uh, the truth that the church was going to encounter the Antichrist and that the coming of Christ was going to occur in the wake of their encountering of the Antichrist. It's not just pre-Rathers that think this either. Pre-trib scholars would by and large agree with what was just said. I mentioned in the section of this film about eminence a paper written by a pre-tribulational early church expert named Larry Crutchfield in which he concluded that while he couldn't find any evidence of pre-tribulationism in the early church, he did find what he called intra-tribulationism, by which he meant people who believed they would be raptured out of the middle of the persecution of the Antichrist, which is essentially pre-wrath. In another paper, written more recently, James Stitzinger, who is very much a pre-tribulationist, agrees with Crutchfield's conclusion when he wrote, the early fathers largely held to a period of persecution that would be ongoing when the return of the Lord takes place, and most would see the church suffering through some portion of the tribulation period. He further writes, a type of imminent intra-tribulationism, Crutchfield, or imminent post-tribulationism, Walverd, with occasional pre-tribulational inferences, was believed. In this paper, he quotes 15 church fathers, which, as we will see, certainly do not help his case, and then oddly concludes his paper by contradicting his opening statement when he says, George Ladd, post-tribulationist, is no longer credible when he writes, We can find no trace of pre-tribulationism in the early church, and no modern pre-tribulationist has successfully proved that this particular doctrine was held by any of the church fathers or students of the word before the 19th century. So I'm going to go through these quotes he provided, so I can show you his logic, and by extension, most pre-tribulational logic, as it concerns the church fathers. Before we get started, though, I want to reiterate something that is crucially important. As I said, these pre-tribbers know and freely admit that the early church almost without exception believed that the rapture would occur after the Antichrist showed up and began to persecute the church. They also freely admit, those church fathers that mentioned the seven-year timeline in relationship to the rapture, universally believed the rapture would take place in the last half of the three-and-a-half-year period. So pre-tribbers know very well that they will never, ever win an argument about the early church teaching pre-tribulationism in any kind of traditional way. It's just far too obvious that the early church was anything but pre-tribulational. So what they do is never mention to their congregations what the early church actually believed about the timing of the rapture, and instead claim that the early church believed in imminence. You'll remember that is the idea that Jesus could return at any moment. So the thinking is, if they can prove that the early church believed the rapture could come at any moment, they will call that proof of pre-tribulationism, even if the church father in question also taught the rapture would occur after the midpoint and after the persecution of the church by the Antichrist, 
which is the very opposite of pre-tribulationism. And as absurd as that premise is, they don't even manage to accomplish that much. In Stitzinger's paper, six out of the fifteen quotes from the early church can be placed into a category which could be called imaginary eminence proof texts. This is where he quotes early church fathers who mention words that pre-tribbers have defined as meaning imminence, but don't actually mean imminence. For example, a church father might mention the rapture is coming soon, or that it is near, or that it will be sudden, or that we should watch for it. On the one hand, we could rehash what we talked about in the section on imminence, which is that just because something is soon or near doesn't mean it is imminent. A harvest of crops can be near, but that doesn't mean the harvest will occur at any moment with no preceding signs. Another way to prove this wrong is by noticing that in most cases, the same writers Stitzinger says believed in imminency also teach in other places that lots of signs will come before the rapture. In other words, when a church father said that the rapture is at hand or near, they clearly didn't mean it was imminent, since they also said there would be lots of prophesied events before the rapture. One of the best ways to illustrate this is with the Didache. The very first document outside of the New Testament is called the Didache, and it was written roughly uh, of the turn of, turn of the first century. In his paper, Stitzinger says the following, The final chapter of the Didache provides one of the clearest and most comprehensive statements on imminency. And then he quotes this line, Be watchful for your life, let your lamps not be quenched and your loins not ungirded. But be ye ready, for ye know not the hour in which our Lord cometh. So the writer of the Didache is simply telling his readers to be watchful and to be ready because they don't know the day or the hour of the rapture. As we have seen, in the pre-trib mind, if you are watchful and ready for something, it means that thing could occur at any moment, and that such words in and of themselves are proof of eminence. But if you read the full quote from the Didache, you will see that the writer goes on to name the various signs he wanted them to watch for signs he believed must come before the rapture. By my count, there are 18 events that the writer believed would need to come to pass before the rapture. Most notably, the Antichrist declaring himself to be the Son of God and the persecution of Christians that would follow that event. So you can see the problem. Stitzinger tells his readers that the writers of the Didache clearly and comprehensively taught the rapture could come at any moment just like he believes. But all you have to do is read a few lines after this quote to find out that the writer actually believed there were multiple things that must happen before the rapture, i.e., the opposite of imminence. This is by no means the only instance of a pre-tribulational scholar in a highly respected journal quoting church fathers out of context. It's unfortunately incredibly common. Many have tried to... Uh, look at some of the, the quotes from some of the early church fathers and have tried to say, well, see, it looks like they're uh, pre-tribulational because they hold to imminence, um, which is the idea that uh, Jesus Christ can return at any moment. There are no prophesied events that need to transpire before he returns. And I would suggest to you strongly that the, uh, that the early church fathers did not subscribe to an imminent uh, rapture. Conversely, uh, many of them understood and made it clear in their writings uh, that there would be a time of coming persecution uh, before believers would be raptured. The centerpiece of pre-tribulational church father quotes, though, is from Pseudo-Ephraim, and I should mention that we have moved well beyond the early church at this point. This particular quote was from the Middle Ages, and it is almost certainly a forgery. Pseudo-Ephraim thousands of dollars spent, countless hours spent, searching every historical record we could find for a reference or proof of the pre-trip position. They come up with a document that's called pseudo-Ephraim. Pseudo means false. So here is a writing ascribed to a man named Ephraim that everybody knows he didn't write it. 
And it supposedly is proof of a pre-trib rapture. There are lots of writings written by somebody who wanted it to be more important than it really was. So he puts the name of an important person on it in order to give it legitimacy. We have lots of those writings. But the fact that the pre-trip system would use one of those writings as a basis for the proof of their position, to me, is unconscionable. But regardless of who wrote it, this is the section they will usually quote. All the saints and elect of God are gathered together before the tribulation, which is to come, and are taken to the Lord, in order that they may not see at any time the confusion which overwhelms the world because of our sins. Stitzinger says the following of Pseudo-Ephraim in general. It describes the imminent rapture, followed by three and a half years of great tribulation under the rule of Antichrist, followed by the coming of Christ, the defeat of Antichrist, and the eternal state. Let's talk about the before the tribulation quote first. As we discussed at the beginning of this film, the word tribulation has only recently been used to refer to the entire seven-year period, like the way modern pre-tribbers use it. And if Pseudo-Ephraim did mean to refer to the entire seven-year period when he used this word tribulation, it would be the earliest recorded instance of the word being used that way. The Greek word thlipsis, or tribulation, is used in many ways in the Bible. It can refer to the wrath of God, general persecution, or earthly worries. It depends on the context. So the question that Stitzinger forgets to ask here is what does this writer mean when he uses the word tribulation? What does the writer think we are going to escape by the rapture? Is it the wrath of God? The persecution of the Antichrist? All of it? The answer is not what pre-tribbers want it to be at all, which is why they never quote the final paragraph of this letter which says, And when the three and a half years have been completed, the time of the Antichrist, through which he will have seduced the world, will come the sign of the Son of Man, and coming forward the Lord shall appear with great power and much majesty, and also even with all the powers of the heavens, with the whole chorus of the saints, with those who bear the sign of the Holy Cross upon their shoulders, as the angelic trumpet precedes him, which shall sound and declare, Arise, O sleeping ones, arise, meet Christ, because his hour of judgment has come. Then Christ shall come, and the enemy shall be thrown into confusion, and the Lord shall destroy him by the spirit of his mouth. Now remember, Stitzinger said that this writer said that the rapture would be followed by three and a half years of rule under the Antichrist. But this shows that the writer believed that the rapture, where the sleeping ones arise at the angelic trumpet sound, would occur after the three and a half year period. So that's either mid-trib, pre-wrath, or post-trib. The only thing it really can't be is pre-trib. When I looked at the document and studied it, it seemed to me that it argued more for a mid-trib rapture or a rapture that was certainly not pre-tribulational. It didn't seem to me to support the idea that there was going to be a rapture before the seventh week even started. There are actually a couple of ways to check our facts here. The first is this idea about being thrown into confusion. Here in this last paragraph, this confusion is what happens after the rapture. The author equates the judgment of the world and the wrath of God with confusion. And if we go back up to the quote pre-tribbers always use, we can see something interesting when it says, All the saints and elect of God are gathered together before the tribulation, which is to come, and are taken to the Lord, in order that they may not see at any time the confusion which overwhelms the world because of our sins. This confusion is what the writer said Christians would escape by participating in the rapture. So we have contextual proof that when the writer said the church would escape the tribulation, he was using the word tribulation to describe the wrath or judgment of God upon those left behind. We certainly know he wasn't talking about escaping the Antichrist or persecution since he absolutely believed the church would face the Antichrist before the rapture. So once again, the pre-tribs swing and miss when it comes to the church fathers. Another five of his 15 quotes in this paper 
are from about 1586 to 1795. They are quotes from pre-millennial historicists who believe in something called the pre-conflagration theory. Now, on the one hand, these quotes are irrelevant because they are all things that pre-Rathers believe too. Take, for example, this quote from Peter Jurieu, who died in 1713. Christ would come in the air to rapture the saints and return to heaven before the battle of Armageddon. This quote may be a problem for some post-tribulationists, but pre-Rathers, like pre-Tribbers, believe that the rapture will happen well before Armageddon. That is, the rapture happens, and then Armageddon happens later on. So it's notable that Stitzinger wastes a full five of his fifteen quotes on something that is at best a rebuke of some post-tribulationists. You might as well call these proof for the pre-wrath rapture, if your only criteria is that the quote must be bad for post-tribulationists. Interestingly, Thomas Ice of the Pre-Trib Resource Center wrote a paper which is effectively rebuking people like Stitzinger, who use quotes from pre-conflagrationalists and claim they are supporting pre-tribulationism. Because as Ice, who is obviously a pre-tribber, notes, Mead's interval, the pre-conflagration theory, between the rapture and the second coming is likely only hours or days, but not years as required by a pre-tribulational viewpoint. The Second Peter 3 verse 10 conflagration is a final destruction of the heavens and earth in preparation for the millennium within Mead's system. Stitzinger never mentioned any of this in his paper. In fact, he points to one of these conflagration quotes from John Gill in his conclusion as conclusive proof for a pre-Darby belief in the pre-trib rapture, which is utterly absurd. The few quotes I haven't dealt with yet are pretty easily dismissed. For example, he quotes a cult leader in the 1300s, and even the guy who originally published this particular quote admits that the writer actually believed that they were living in the last three and a half years of end-time tribulation. So whatever it is, it's not pre-tribulationism. In conclusion, pre-tribbers know they can't find anything close to pre-tribulationism in the early church fathers. The early church almost without exception taught that the rapture would take place at some unknown time after the Antichrist arrived and began persecuting Christians. In other words, if you had to pick a modern rapture position that best fit the early church, it's obviously the pre-wrath position. If you liked this film, please consider sharing it with your friends and family. It is by far the best way to help get the message out. We are counting on the small percentage of you that understood and were impacted by this film to reach those that you feel need to hear this message. This film is free on the web, but you can buy physical copies at our website, 7 pretribproblemscom where we will provide free resources, videos, and much more content to learn about the pre-wrath rapture. Thanks for watching.